Hello. Today we're going to be looking at the menu options within the Suprema BioStation A2. Uh, for the purposes of the video I'm going to be using a, a simple stylus just to uh, tap my way around the screen. Uh, it might just work a little bit better than a finger just for the purposes of the video. Um, so the first option we're going to go to is uh, display and sound. And the first thing I'd like to change is the menu timeout. Uh, I'm going to tap on that. It's default to 20 seconds, which is a little bit short. Um, normally I would change that to be 60 seconds, but for the purposes of this video, I'm going to select always on so it doesn't accidentally time out uh, on us today while I'm explaining a particular function. Let's click OK on there, and that's now set to always on. Uh, while we're in here, um, there's also a backlight timeout option that's also set to 20 seconds. So that can uh, make the screen dim, uh, so it uses slightly less energy. It's not projecting um, a bright light throughout the environment where the device is located. Um, so again, I tend to switch that to 60 seconds and I think for today that would be absolutely fine. Okay, um, so further down in this menu, uh, we have uh, voice instruction, which we can switch on. Um, so if I just uh, pop that one on there, uh, that is now switched on. And I can also uh, adjust the volume setting as well. It's currently 40. I can just use this slider here to, to pop that up a little bit if I wanted to do that. Okay. Um, there are a few more options within this screen, but uh, these are the, the ones I'm concentrating on today. Okay, so if we now uh, go back to have a look at the authentication menu, uh, right at the very top we've got authentication mode. Uh, this basically controls how we can clock in and clock out. So I have one option where it's finger only. Uh, so you just use a finger on its own to clock in and clock out. Um, there's another option here where it uses a card plus a finger or card uh, plus a PIN number to clock in. Now I want to change that. I'm going to select it and I'm going to remove the um, PIN uh, option just by clicking on the cross if I can. And, uh, also the finger and also the finger option. And that just leaves the card only. So that should allow me to uh, clock in and out using uh, card only or finger only. Uh, there are other combinations that you can have. You could have it so it can be finger plus pin, finger plus card, you know, all sorts of different combinations that you could have. But this is, tends to be the way that we normally set things up. Okay, uh, so Again, still within authentication, um, there's a few options within here. Uh, something called face detection, which we tend not to use. Uh, that can basically be used to make sure that there, uh, the camera picks up uh, an actual face before it allows a valid clocking to occur. Uh, there's a few other bits and pieces in terms of uh, the security of the fingerprint and how um, tight a match it needs to be uh, regarding the security level and the match. Do you want to see the image of the finger that you've just uh, placed on the uh, sensor every time that you clock in and out? I tend not to have that on. Um, sensitivity modes. To be honest, all of these settings here we tend to leave as default, leave as standard. It's only if there's a very specific reason that we might want to either increase the security level if it's potentially for a, a server room door or something like that. Uh, you can see there that the, the backlight is just uh, dimmed down after 60 seconds of non-use. A uh, few of the bits down here, we've got things like a, a live fingerprint, finger detection. Again, if you want to put that on, that then you can. Um, and advanced enrolment is something I always, always have on. I think it helps to uh, get a more, a more uh, accurate first enrolment uh, when people are uh, enrolling for their fingers for the first time. So it wasn't a great deal that we changed in that screen. Uh, let's see if I can go back. Um, so if we pop down to uh, network, so we've got a few options within here and it's normally a device that we would be interested in. Um, 
TCP IP uh, Ethernet is enabled. Uh, there's no wireless on this particular model. Um, there is another um, A2 version which, which does have a wireless capability if required. Uh, I can set the uh, network to be DHCP. Alternatively, I can um, put in a fixed IP address. Uh, if I click on the edit button first, perhaps. Um, uh, so I should just be able to tap in, there we go. I should just be able to tap in uh, a, a different IP address into there if I wanted to do that. Um, but uh, one thing of note is it's always uh, advisable to have the device actually connected up to a network uh, before changing the IP details. Uh, otherwise, it, the IP address I, that you've typed in doesn't always save correctly. Uh, that's uh, it's, it's it's just something that the device does. It really needs to be plugged into a network um, uh, before it will actually save the IP credentials that you've tapped in. Okay, so we'll come out of network and uh, we'll pop down to, well we've already had a look at display and sound I think, so we'll pop down to device um, in here um, there's some options if we want to use the A2 as a, a, an interphone, that's like a video, a video uh, intercom um, there's options to do with the camera which we tend not to use um, the relay if you're going to be using the device to fire a relay for access control use or some other function then we can um, set it so that the relay is on every time there is a valid transaction currently we've got that set off um, we're not we've not got it hooked up to anything so there's no need for it to to be firing the relay when it doesn't need to. Um, date and time, that's something we always have a look at. Uh, now, we, when we're using Focus software, we switch off time sync in here, and then we're able to uh, change the date format, uh, normally to UK date. Um, and we can choose whether to have the time format in AM or PM. Uh, we can also uh, change the time and date from within the screen, but it will only allow us to do that if time sync is switched off. Uh, time sync is normally used with the BioStar software, uh, but the Focus software will still be able to update the BioStation A2 with the correct date and time uh, every time it downloads. Uh, so it's, it tends to be kept always up to date. Right, uh, so this, if we wanted to look at some more options within here, there is uh, device info, so if you needed to find the uh, MAC address of the device, of the network card, then, then that's in here. We've got the firmware version, the device ID, um, some information like that. Uh, but further down, we've got some options where we can uh, restart the device, so in other words, just reboot the device on the wall, which is sometimes can be useful if there's some kind of network outage and it doesn't manage to get itself back on the network again for whatever reason. Um, restore default does, does what it says. It will um, put you back to pretty much factory settings. Uh, there's a few other bits and pieces to look in there, but that's probably all we need to concentrate on for, for the moment. Um, if we t drop down to event log, uh, so the system tries to record everything that's ever done within the device. So uh, this can, event log can be extremely large over time. And we can see, using the lovely, nice scrollable screen, everything which, is, which has happened um, and see what the log total is. Uh, so any clockings that, that have occurred would go in here. So if you, for whatever reason, you needed to actually look on the device itself for uh, a clocking uh, that had occurred at a particular time that could be found within here. And there's also some filter options which uh, allow you to, uh, to filter by date and filter by employee, um, that kind of thing. So uh, they, can be, they can be useful if you're looking for something particular. There they are there. Uh, filter by a particular event, for example, like uh, um, identify success, uh, which might be a clocking type. Okay, so uh, another option is to delete the log file, which if you wanted to do that, you can. Um, you want to make sure that everything's up to date. You've got all of your clockings uh, all up to date before you delete the log file. But 
like I said, the log file can get very, very large. Uh, so once in a while, if you want to delete the log file, as long as you're happy that you're up to date, then that's uh, you're very free to do that. Um, can be quite useful just to keep that log file and memory um, not, not filled up too much. Um, so the one we missed out here was uh, TNA, time and attendance. So I've got this set up slightly differently to um, a standard firmware build of the BioStation A2 where I've got an option for job code. Uh, so we have uh, an option where we can um, use our software to update the BioStation A2 with a series of, of job codes or, or tasks or activities um, which the user can uh, op uh, opt to select uh, that particular activity at the point of clocking in uh, and that will create a, a clocking transaction with obviously with the date and time with the person's identity but also uh, with the the job code the task the cost center whatever you want to call it as part of that clocking transaction as well and that can be extremely useful uh, and very very powerful it allows an organization to monitor how much time has been spent working in each of these different cost centers um, a cost center could represent a, a particular um, job function or um, a department of work something like that so we've got ours uh, set up here so that um, we're not using TNA mode. Uh, TNA mode basically requires you to um, press a button, press a function key for clocking in, press a different button for clocking out. We're not using that. You can, when that's not select, when that's set to not use, the person could just put their finger on, and it will be up the soft, up to the software to determine whether it's an in or an out. Um, but what we have got on here is, is job code is selected and we'll probably look at that in the, the next session when we look at uh, em, em, enrolling employees and uh, employees clocking on the device. Okay, so uh, that's pretty much everything I wanted to cover uh, in this particular session. Um, thank you very much for watching.